Yeah. We're good. Five o'clock. Okay. Everybody's here? Yep. All right. I'll call the meeting to order. Five o'clock. Um, roll call. Frank is absent, but he did send me a report. Okay. Ann, okay. Roger, Here. me, staff is Tina and Julia and Jen. Oh, there's no audience of citizens tonight. Oh, I'm disappointed. I like it. We'll do that. Um, this will probably be a short meeting because we don't have too much going on, but. Uh, Senior Center Director's Report, Tina. We approve oh, the minutes. Yeah, you didn't approve the minutes. Oh, I did approve it. <laughs> <laughs> approval of the minutes. Um, motion, uh, to approve. motion to approve September 18th. Second. With the approval of minutes. Is there a second? Dan, okay. Second. Second, okay. Second. All right. No, there's no one. Citizens. Nadia, do you all in favor? All in favor? Uh, Opposed? <laughs> okay. Minutes are accepted as written. Um, Senior Center Director, report, Tina. Um, so I gave you the average per weekday, um, <laughs> and then I gave you the average per day by month. And this is for the year. There's no December. Um, if you want to see it differently, or if you want to see something else, just let me know. Um, our transportation service requests have increased. Uh, we are now providing transportation currently to 179 individuals and individuals, and we are uh, have um, they have rides scheduled to 132 different locations. Uh, we have provided 6,562 rides. Those are duplicate from January to today. As of today, we have 1,247 seniors have their key tags for my senior center. Uh, that's an increase of 38 since our last meeting in September. 1,247. It's on your report there, Kay. Okay. Just so you know. Table tips. Roger. Um, we are currently in the process of filling our two vacant positions, assistant director and part-time program coordinator. We will be conducting interviews on November 30th and December 1st for the assistant director position, and then we will interview for the part-time program coordinator. When do you think that will? Well, it's just the 30th and the 1st is just the first round of interviews. We usually do a second round. Yeah, unless only one person shines and really blows us away, we'll probably do two rounds because we're interviewing eight people to start. Eight people. You have eight people that have applied? More than eight. More than eight. Oh, really? Eight is who we're interviewing. There was more <laughs> that applied, but the um, HR pulls out the ones that they uh, oh, no, they no. determine that are qualified. Yeah, she yeah. probably sent us about 30 overall to look at so and we picked yeah i can count the two sections maybe 25 yeah i think they had a lot more though i think so just too. from the people reaching out to me via email or phone call they had quite a few applying and indeed you have so many people that apply on indeed that literally have nothing to do with the job it's just they automatically apply for everything this planning and zoning dealt with that yeah. account that counts for unemployment right I was and that's what planning and zoning dealt with that. Happens. Yeah. You apply. That yeah. counts for unemployment. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully by I would assume mid December. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, we would have somebody in place for assistant director, and then hopefully before the end of the year, or at least have an offer on the table for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Figure if they have to give two weeks. So. But. Mid December. Yeah. For an it's offer. Is the third week of Christmas? So yeah, nobody wants to start. The hope is no. we immediately agree on December first on who to bring back for second rounds and schedule right. them ASAP. 
Yeah. And have a date that works for the panel. And we can bring them in. January 1st would probably be more realistic. Oh, for the start. Yeah. Yeah. yeah once you count yeah. two weeks' so notice and everything. Do you have to start like on a Thursday, like the state does? Or no. Or they can start any no, as a, the, when you get hired, you have to go through a um, background check and uh, drug testing first. Yeah. I don't know about drug. Yeah, that's what she told me. Really? Yeah, because I, I inquired that. about it. for something else, and she said all part time and full time new employees have to go through a background check and. Um, that's background. new. Yeah, because oh, we didn't have to do that. I that definitely had a background check when I got hired. Yeah, we didn't have to do it. So the new world. The new world. So please, so please be patient for the yeah. next month. Yeah. Well, you know, it it's difficult because for you. You know, because yeah. so many people. Thank God for my volunteers. Yeah, I know. You have very good volunteers. Yeah, and very good. Very capable uh, ones too. And my part-time, part-time. Yeah, I, I brought I brought in Kathy's uh, Roger's wife, Kathy, because she doesn't have she she, she has breasts. Kathy anymore. Yeah, she was so here today. She'll be here tomorrow. Oh, see, She's I got to be out. She doesn't have person. She doesn't have grandma duty. Uh, Her grandkids are. Down in Texas, so oh, so she so, has time yeah. I said if you have time and you can work, yeah. So yeah. she's yeah, she's a big help today. Oh yes. Well, so, tell her I said hello because yes. I wasn't here today and yeah. I won't be here. Tomorrow. I'm actually looking for a volunteer on Wednesday afternoon to man the phones because Mary Ellen is having surgery. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. So and my other volunteers can't cover it. So and Thursday is Turkey Bingo Day. Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> so then I'm by myself. So it's uh they usually work twelve thirty to uh, Mary Allen's good. She'll stay till four. Yeah. The other ones usually stay till like two thirty. I'm off, otherwise I'd be here. Yeah. So Debbie's at the community center, but I need somebody to answer phones. On what on Wednesday. Or I'll answer phones and they do the the the, the raffle stuff for the turkey bin on. We raffle pies on Wednesday at our turkey bingo. Yeah. So it's just kind of hard to be covering the phone, the inside the and the outside, basically. The radio and to try and 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 handle <laughs> the turkey bingo. Is that every Wednesday or it's the Wednesday this? before Thanksgiving? Oh, I see. Because we can't miss a bingo. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> I, so if we have a holiday on a Thursday, we have it on a Wednesday. Yeah. So, if anyone is available or knows somebody that could cover the desk or help me with the bingo, I'll be cooking and baking, so I can't yeah, well, do that. But Roberta won't, huh? She plays bingo. She's not Gail, giving up bingo. Gail can't, and I only have three of them because Mary Ellen's been my super volunteer at the front desk. She's uh -huh. been doing three days. Yeah, Mary Ellen's been amazing been lately. Wonder. Yeah, but she's having hip surgery. So she's going to be out. Beth won't stay the whole day. I might have to do that. Which I can't find somebody. Yeah. I hate to ask her because she's been doing so much extra yeah. too. But Beth has been coming in early yeah. too to help me out. So, so how long will she be out? Uh, she said she should be back December 4th. Really? So, yeah. Oh, that would be quick. Yeah, and then Beth is out. Yeah, she's Beth's going away for Jersey. a week. Oh, so I got Donna and, and Marielle covering for her. We're really, yeah, we're really close. Cool. Cool. When it rains, it pours. I know. So if you know of anybody, the week after Thanksgiving, I'm around. Okay, I'm just off Wednesday. Okay, um, Tina, <clears throat> any questions? You, I don't know. Anything else you'd like to see on the report? I never quite sure what I should include. Oh, I just wanted to ask you about the the vehicles. Um. Did you get the two vehicles back or are they still out of commission? Um, no, we got bus two is in the shop. Oh, that's the one where the door fell off. Door fell off? Uh, where the wheelchair lift is. Oh, no. That's the old bus, 2008. Tommy went to open it and just fell off. Oh, oh well. So that's we have sweet. the bus one. Got lucky on that one. We have the van. <laughs> just, and we have the car. The car. I saw the car. Well, you got to remember the van went from nine seater to a five seater. 
How come? There was some work that had to be done on it. I can't remember. It was that. I don't even remember. They removed seats. So we only got five seats. Like, really? Yeah. That was years and ago. the car is the old police chief car. Yes. So sometimes That's... you can read the mileage. Sometimes you can't. They were down with it. Yeah. So let me. So that tells you how old the car is. Yeah, I've seen them. Pick it's up. almost at. I think it's almost at two hundred thousand miles. Is there any uh, grants for new transportation? Well, we we worked with um, Jimmy, Jimmy, our fleet manager, and Kevin, and uh, we put in an emergency request to fund uh, the town to fund a bus. Jimmy Jimmy was good. He went to bat and went to Kevin and said, look, you're going to spend more money fixing this bus than you are if we ask council for funds to get a new one. So I think they even appropriated funds so Jimmy could get the order in so we could have the bus for next year. See, that's, the that's how long it's taking to get these vehicles. Slow. So it's not <laughs> like, just so you know, it's not like he can go to the dealership and say, I want to order a bus. Right. It takes... A year, and if you don't get it in by a certain time, it he said we wouldn't have had we it until had it. 2026. Yeah, I think it was right. Yeah, it was, it was insane. But so he has to be on that budget, right? Yeah, so him and Tina went to town council, and Tina did great explaining. I watched town council team did great explaining what the buses were for and clarifying some of the incorrect information that Jimmy had put out there about the grant. Right. And then Jimmy talked about how the work on the bus is not worth keeping, but we can't wait until the next capital project, capital budget. We need to do it now. And they approved it. So Good. we did like an emergency statement of need to, to, um, who was that to Kevin and the town manager? Kevin eventually went with the agenda item to council, right. I think. And explained to them that all our vehicles, except for the town, have been a 5310 grant. So the town has only paid 20% of each of those vehicles costs. Mm -hmm. So we figured over the years, maybe the town has spent 35,000 on uh, three vehicles mm -hmm. for the last, what, I think 15 years. Yeah. So we said like the town really hasn't spent the money, but now we need the town to, to come up with some money to replace our bus and I it was it, I had money that I hadn't spent that I had from trips that we had earned from doing trips mm -hmm. so we used part of that money to help them secure the purchase of the bus I would hope when they do a new bus that they have some input from you because uh, they're good yep they, were they gave us uh, Tina and Joe reviewed it right, and I had Joe the drive Joe <laughs> the company driver yeah that's so important yeah because I remember one of those buses that got here yeah was not adequate yeah you know that was the van the whatever it was yeah and I remember that but I think this is only an eight passenger bus I don't remember and it has a lift it has a lift yeah. it's not a twelve I don't believe what we have now and one of them when they when they had the lift the other people couldn't get through. that was the van was that, that was that was the issue with the van yeah was where they placed the wheelchair lift yeah instead of putting in the back right. they put it on the side yeah and where the securement of the wheelchair was was in the you had to walk around it to get to the seats yep so that was the issue with the thing. And I think I remember at that time that before they do anything else, they should check with you and you should. Yeah, they did. They sent me, people. Jimmy sent me a, uh, like they send you a list of all the items that are included on the bus, the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then I had Joe, because he's more familiar. Right. And he's driving it. Right. Um, Go over it and it looked fine. Yeah, it's eight. It's an eight passenger. Eight passenger. And you know how much it is? How much? Um, is what it on? was it? Hundred and twenty? Yes, something. Uh, it doesn't say on here. This but is our twenty twenty one bus that we purchased with the fifty three ten grant. And we only paid twenty percent of that. That was sixty seven thousand from that year to now. It's gone double. Sure. It's it eight up. passenger seats plus four wheelchairs. Right. So, whether you have one wheelchair or four, you still only have eight seats. Eight seats. 
Yeah. But yeah, I think it was like 120 or something. Yeah. Wow. So it was insane. So hopefully the 5310 grant will come out again. That's a, a, a do the uh, FTA, Federal Transportation. And it comes through DOT. Mm -hmm. um, they, the non traditional came out, which is for actual like transportation program. The traditional is for vehicles, mm -hmm. but it didn't come out for the vehicles because they were still filling orders from previous years. And because the costs had gone up so much, they were using that money to help offset that. So that's why they didn't do the traditional. So hopefully it'll come out again. And then we can replace our van. When do you think that would come out? They said it was going to come out in the fall, and it did. Oh, so and, and their prices are going to go sky high now. Yeah, yeah. So, so all vehicles are sky high now. Right. Oh yeah, everything is high. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Anybody want to see anything else on the report? <laughs> are you going to have that fifty-three ten grant for this vehicle or no? No. 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 No, we can only you apply for it, and then it it's you only get it if if you're accepted. And there's a lot of people that apply for it. Okay. So we did get we have gotten it three other times. One bought the van, one bought the 2021, and one bought the used 2008 Red Cross. So, largely will bias this. I don't think does Marjorie Moore still exist for funds. I don't, I have never heard of it. And I don't think they'd have $120,000 yeah. worth. No, it's probably, no, they'll probably do that. I don't even know if that still exists. Yet. Me neither. I haven't heard anyone applying for that in ages. Right. Oh, yeah. That might be all that money. Yeah. Um, okay. Everybody should ask. All right. Thank you, Tina. You're welcome. Um, Frank is not able to come tonight. He was called in work on emergency, but, um, he does want, I tabled his report till next time, but he does want me to mention that he has been receiving scam calls and he wants seniors to be aware, do not answer any questions over the phone because they were, they sounded very legitimate and they almost like, you know, it was a, a real thing and it was good for him because he, he knew it wasn't, but he said, the average person probably would not know that and they would just go along with it. And, you know, so he just wants people to know. And he said, if you could just maybe even post something somewhere, you know. Please yeah, constantly put post on the, too. On the robo call. Yeah, we were so sad to the um, <clears throat> police here. Uh huh. But I don't think we had enough people sign up. They had to cancel. Oh. They were going to go over scanners. Yeah. Um, but the new scam is, which I did see a report on, um, it's artificial intelligence, and they're 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 somehow using voice so right. that you think it's your kids yeah. Yeah. calling you. Yeah. Like a gentleman who was an attorney, they said it was his son calling. He had hit somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, some lawyer was there to represent him, or whatever. And he said it was the voice of my son, but it was not his son. That is going to be so. That's uh, scary. Yeah. It's going to have to be control it. Yeah. So. Well, he did want you to okay. maybe put that on the road. Yeah, I'll try and get yeah. another program. But he doesn't place. want people to answer the calls or call back or. The police have the, the police have always said if you don't know the number, don't answer it. If yeah. it's important, they'll leave right. a message. If right. you do and answer it, don't give any personal information. My TV now it'll say possible scam. Yep. scam. Yeah, because <laughs> the PD that comes in the like, PD have done some press releases about it in the past. Yeah, yeah. The police always say if you if you're not expecting a call, from that number, don't answer. Don't if you're not expecting an email from that person, don't open it. And if you're not expecting somebody to, at your door, don't open. It. Yeah. Well, I think it's hard because the numbers, I don't know the numbers of all my grandchildren, right. so the numbers are hard, but um, I know that there's sometimes, hey, weren't you getting one that said potential scam? Yeah. And it was Tina's. Yeah. Oh. The yeah. 7006 number. Yep. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I wonder how that would, <laughs> yeah. why that would happen. Was that the robocall? 
mine still saying. says maybe Victoria Helber when that when the when the robocall comes in. That's what mine says. That. Yeah, because she was not getting her calls, and she said she asked me about it, and I said yes. And then the next time she got one, she noticed it was a senior. Center. Well, it might come up as a petition potential scam because they identified as a robo. Yeah. Yeah. But you know the number, so yeah, you know you can mine, answer that. So, but I know. And I don't answer robocalls of the potential spam. I don't answer those. I'll find out why it's going to be. Yeah, why it's going to be. Yeah, you're going to see mine that says potential spam. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll ask. Yeah. That's just fine. If you don't answer it, you have the voicemail anyway. Yeah, it could be. Okay. Um, Housing report. <coughs> and? There's really nothing new. Nothing new. We haven't had we haven't had any any kind of repairs or anything that I can see. Okay. You know, I haven't found thirty five green in yet. Place. <laughs> no. And and we don't know where we're, um Wells Fargo is with that either. <laughs> okay, uh, Roger. I put you on the agenda because you have so many connections with seniors. <laughs> That I'm going to ask you from time to time if you have anything that you want to add or contribute. Okay. Okay. Because Roger is very involved now with the Medicare, right, Roger? I am. Yeah. So um, I did just I did go online to the uh, Public Housing Authority on their uh, handbook as far as uh, tenant selection and waiting list. I mean, they have guidelines on the national um, with regards to waitlist and tenant selection, which don't necessarily match what we were told was required in the federal government for a year. But I think this, the way they select is a local thing, not a federal requirement. So. I don't know how that would be, though, because he said there's guidelines to. Yeah, there are. But that but, doesn't say. They, they don't require you to have a, a, a lottery. A lottery? Open Opening the waiting list. It tells you how to open it. It tells you where to do with the person, how long you should be on it. So that's something that has to be brought up at their meeting. Yeah, it's not yeah. ours, but I mean, just yeah. Yeah. should somebody... That That's what needs to happen. We've had so many meetings here with Joe and people coming to talk. They need to go to the housing authority meeting. So they're not just talking to Joe here. They're talking to the entire housing authority Dialogue. board. That's what we have to push people do, to do. Instead of bringing Joe back here, back here, and talking to the same group of people, tell them to go to the housing authority meeting because then it's not just Joe they're talking to. It's the whole board. Because who knows how much of what is said here is getting back to that board. So I think if we have seniors that ask, we have to send them to that housing authority meeting. Yeah, speak up there, yeah. Yeah, I did go to that meeting. Yeah, I and think. there were people there. From, Good. And they did bring that up. At the, at the meeting, it was uh, <clears throat> October that I went and it was how it was um, very interesting because a lot of people came October 11th I, at Marjorie Moore and there was quite a few people there and they did bring up that uh, I wonder issue if... on the wait list. So open application is, is open for personal height. It is open now? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. With no deadline. Usually there's a deadline. Yes. Until and what they, about Marjorie Moore? No, that one's not open. Because I thought there was two. Uh, the one they're open is the applications for personal items. But I'm curious. Until, until they further notice, she said. They didn't put a date on it. Okay. Do you remember that council? That because people don't want to go there. They may say they the have to Council came out with a new ordinance that some meetings have to be reported via offered. Zoom. If they're offered, do you know if housing authority was on that list? I don't think so. I don't think they were independent. Well, it's also the you might be on the list. You might be right. Your name is Pete. I'm going to check that though because they're not posted. So, but you're right. They're separate. They're not right. Right, because they're they're funded differently. Yes, I've never heard of anything. That's true. We should ask that too. I'm going to ask. I'm going to look into that. Okay, Roger. You have nothing else. I would no. think it would be. I think they have to. Thank right. you. Right. Um, my report, I did go to that meeting October 11th, and uh, residents attended. Joan, of course, <laughs> was in charge. Um, 
I called him the other night to check on the funding for the senior housing. And he said that the town, the attorney is going to send a letter to the town um, because the town, there's a like $10,000 bond, municipal bond to fund this $34 million project. So he's still hold, he's looking for another um, supplier, but Wells Fargo is still holding on to their money. So he's had no cooperation with them. And according to the mayor, the day that I went to that meeting, he said they have not responded to the town either. And I can't see, uh, personally, I can't see the mayor telling the people in town that they have to come up with 34, whatever it is, <laughs> to pay for the new housing. Because oh, I think no. the town's going to tell them, forget it. Yeah, if they had to go to a referendum, those townspeople wouldn't pay for that. No, because they have If to. they won't pay for a senior center, they sure as heck aren't going to say pay for more senior housing. That was what the funding was going to be. They were going to try to get funding to build the project. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. they can't even go ahead to take down the uh, Knights of Columbus because that's all tied in together. So, um, But I do want you to know, talking to Joe last night, there are 94 people on the wait list for senior housing. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Telling us 200 back in the spring. Well, 94. Yeah. I think his scale, I think his scale, his, his people scale is sliding on a sliding basis, depending on who he thinks needs to know. Well, I think that it's, they have to show applications, you know, we have to see who's applied and if there's no well, you don't put it in an application all that goes on that list is your name you don't put it in an application yes, until they pull your name no no we had those applications we used to have them on the yeah because i remember you, you, them up and you put in an application Sorry. they then review your application and see if you qualify if you qualify then you can put on the list okay all right yeah, because I remember getting one. Yeah, the applications are here. Oh, they, they used guys. to be on the counter yes, there. Yes, they are. We always put them out when it's open. And we let people know right. when they're available. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, are they available now? Yes. Okay, so could you put that also on your robot phone? Too? Yes. And they're for and they're the ones for? Personal for, heights. Okay. For personal. Yeah. I think there's only, I don't know how many apartments there are left. I think there's two. Well, I know that they're going to be, we they're getting them. tougher on main, maintenance of units. Yes. That's, yeah, we're going to have an inspection on that. That's yeah. another thing. When they're going to start inspection. Yes. Because some people are not maintaining yeah. their units. I really would like to see this inspection. Do you know, since I've been here, they have never come into my apartment once. Well, in all start, the years I've been start. here, and I've been here like almost seven years now. Where were they with renovations? The last time they had the state people here, the girl was Liz was here, and she walked around and showed him three apartments. Showed them three apartments. That's right, the only think, ones they looked at. I think you. I mean, Liz is gone. Yeah, I know, but I mean, Rose is different. Yeah, yes, well, she good. is. Rose is a, she she's tougher. <laughs> yes. Were okay. they renovating five units here? Uh, I don't know, but I know that. I know that Rose said that they're going to start inspections. That well, they need people to. are not keeping up yeah. and are are destroying units, and that they're going to start evicting. Are, are there units open here now? Are there units? That there, are was there, there was one. There was one. Two. two. They were working on two units. So yeah, there was one or one or two. Here. Yeah. Didn't we at the last meeting? Did we say there were five old things? There was a bunch we did fill, but, but there was a few. Years. There was five at Marjorie Moore, and one was uh, what's her name? Is oh, okay. she's living the dream down there? She loves it. You know? uh, Arlene. Oh, Lane. Elaine. Yeah. Yes. So there was five down there, but I think there's only there was only one left <clears throat> down at Marjorie Moore. I don't know if they filled it. You what? told me they were working on some. I guess when they yeah. get done, they have to clean them up and. Yeah, she's saying that people are not. Oh, I know. Well, they said they had to renovate them. They're, they're, yeah, hot. because they're not in the same. Right. And they're disgusting. What's the status of the leak in the here, right? And then... As far as I know, <laughs> they repaired the roof on that side where it was leaking. The rug is not wet anymore. 
So that's repaired. What I didn't understand was, did you guys actually fund the repairs to your roof? Yeah. Okay. See, that's why. So that's why they only did half a million. Right, because the the stipulation is we <clears throat> we rent this portion of our and of you the have building. To maintain. We have to maintain it. Just like we maintain yeah. a certain section of the parking lot and the grounds. And then housing does their does portion. Exactly. Now that's what I figured after I thought about it a while. I said it had to be that you guys were paying for your get your Yeah, stuff. we did. Yeah. You know, and uh, that, that. that end that end has got some issues. So they tried to repair some of them, but you know, the problem is there's no money. He has no money to fix anything there. And if you don't have money to fix anything, DeMarco's not going to do that. DeMarco's not fronting their money no. to fix anything. It's not their building. They're just managing it. So we're just sort of stuck in the middle. Because what he takes in, that's what he Right. And they're going to get tougher on people and, and then maintaining their units. That's well, why they're they doing the inspection. They need, they need to. to. Yeah. There were some of them that were really bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's and there still did. are. Yeah, I know. I toured one with Liz one day, and I was shocked. You know, um, there's some that have worse. Well, it was a vacant apartment, and it yeah. had to be renovated and, and yeah. cleaned up, and it really was a shock. Bad shape. Well, and that's the sad part is that the people that are coming in, they're not maintaining them when there's people dying to be in there that would maintain. Them. Yeah, that, that's that's the sad. Yeah, that's it's true. Hard, it's hard. To that's the sad yep. because the state requires you to take. The application. I have a it, the people, middle you know, and they would come in I think like once a year. If they saw a cobweb in the corner, they would write them up. Well, it doesn't sound like they were doing that and they weren't enforcing it. Sage, when I lived in Sage, we got inspected every single year and they came into your apartment and so looked around, they looked at the closets, they looked under things, you know, they that checked all your burners and your stove though. to make your sure your whole stove's working. They yeah. made sure your refrigerator was working, your washer was working. They did all that. And they don't, they haven't been, I don't think this, they've been in my apartment. That's long. why. Or maybe twice. I mean, a few <laughs> times the manager Liz yeah. came down a lot to talk to me. We were talking, but she wasn't doing any kind of an inspection. Because that didn't mean to keep her working so far. She probably just blew it up. Well, so, I think that the, yes. the staff, now, Rose, Rosa, Rosa will take Rosa care of property management. big buildings yes. in the Bronx. But we need to she's not taking any. And she's tough. Rosa. Yeah, but she's not taking any. No. <laughs> tough and she, and she was going to go over the parking yeah. areas there because I yeah. guess now. She's very good. She's very responsive. And, yeah. And the parking is all full because the new people that are moving right. in are all driving. Yeah. So the parking. Rosa's was, very good. Yeah. Now she takes care of the property management <clears throat> and uh, the other gal that's only part-time is resident service coordinator yeah. and coordinator. And she deals with the resident issues. Yeah. So Rosa uh, doesn't, shouldn't have to do that. Okay. Inspections will be held on the property for safety issues. So he told me that. Um, I had talked about out of town residence fees, and I'm going to table that till January because we can't. We can't. We can't what? We can't because it's coming up, and I have to. I have to put it to the finance department. Oh, so we every should. every so year we have to submit the fee schedules. Days. Yeah. Okay, because <laughs> uh, that was also in that comprehensive report that you gave me. There was a thing about out of town resident, out of town fees. Okay. For people that come this period. Did you talk? I gave it I gave the info to Victoria at the last meeting, the one that I missed. No, I the didn't. Table, uh, did you did not I think. go over it? No. Oh okay. uh, yeah, we have to submit our fee schedule to buy to Kevin by November 30th so that it can go on the council agenda. Right. So that's why we have to talk about it. Yeah. yeah, and I just wonder I was um, gonna bring it up under old business. Oh go ahead. Well, all right, then you, me, I didn't know if you were gonna report on the senior report. center. Okay, let me finish my report here. Um, you want to change any others? I did ask Joe when I went to that meeting how long a family can hold on to those units. That was one of the things that was brought up. 
and people were complaining that it takes so long for them to be on the wait list. He said, as long as the family is paying the rent, they cannot kick them or take their belongings out. I think that's wrong. And I said that to him that night. I said, they should be given a time, three months or whatever it is, to you know pay the rent for three months, and then you either get the stuff out and put it in storage or get rid of it. He, he might be having some legal thing that he has to do. And is it for somebody that's alive or somebody who passed away? Somebody that leaves the apartment that either passed away or they're never coming back. They're either assisted living. And... Yeah, he would have to follow whatever the legal thing is for eviction process. That's what he said. He yeah. said that he has to follow that. And I think that I said to him, there should be a way for you to uh, at least look into getting that shortened. I mean, that just doesn't seem like it should go on forever, especially when you have people waiting for I'm sure he's not the only landlord that agrees with, that may possibly agree with you no. in the entire United States. I'm sure not. <laughs> Probably. But, a... You know, I mean, you have to be sensible about things. People are waiting for the apartments. You can't, if somebody wants to pay a year, then, you know, why should they be able to do that? Well, isn't there some kind of a law with the landlords that they... If they have such somebody that's not paying and they get a go to evict them, I know they were doing it. Right. There's there's a whole legal precedent if you're going to evict somebody. If they're getting a if they're getting the rent every month, I don't think they have legal well, precedent to evict someone. Yeah. So as long as they're getting their rent, they have no reason to evict. Yeah. For whatever reason they don't want to come up and get the stuff or whatever it is, or they, they it's easier they for them to just stuff. pay the bill every month. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's easier to do that than to get they did have one over there. <laughs> What's that? The person's not living there. That's the, the whole person that passed right. away and the family yeah. kept paying the rent and nobody was living there. And that doesn't seem right to me. And that's what I don't I know if that's still happening, but well, I don't know, but I did bring that up that night. Or something, and, they're in the home and, they got and you know they're coming back. back. <laughs> they're planning to go back. But I think they were trying to delay it to take time to move stuff out. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay, so that's that for my report. Um, let's see. Old business? You're going to talk about the meeting we had here on the first? Oh, yes, we should talk about that. I thought Tina was going to bring that up. And I know that I was going to bring up the. Yeah, it's on the agenda. So I, figured it. I thought you were, since it's, un, it's under you. Senior I, Center, Community Center. Number nine. Number nine. I know. Senior I thought Center, you would bring up that. Center. We did bring that up that night, that yeah. day. I, I hate to tell you how frustrated I am with that whole thing. And I hear the same thing over and over and over. If we don't, he said, the mayor said, that we're going to uh, discuss the fact that the building is too big and it's too expensive. And, and I brought up that day that you know, we have had no discussion about that. So where we're at with this, I don't know, but I, it's just frustrating to me that he keeps saying we're going to talk about it and we never do. And it's in the hands of the finance board. <clears throat> so I don't know. <clears throat> and the thing that bothers me is how do you let the same people and expect different results? You know? They think that they're doing a good job because they had an overwhelming vote. Well, you have to, uh, the mayor said at the last of that meeting, if they were going to revisit it. You said you'd have, be able to have a revised plan in, in hand by January 2024. It's his statement that I wrote down in my notes. Oh, really? I didn't write that down. <clears throat> January 24. No, January 2024. So he's saying by, by January. January. We should uh, be able to get a revised plan in January 2024, Mark. So now you got to put. That's the wide plan? No, that's, no. A, that's a revised. Shrink, shrinking center. the building. Yeah. <laughs> Down to about 30. 5,000, 35 million instead of, or 25,000 square, square foot feet. instead of 70,000 square foot. I mean, you know, he, 
the problem with that meeting was he just spoke saying the things that he wanted to say in regards to the architect. And, I mean, I think you're, you're you're wrong to just throw out that architect and start all over because then you're starting from ground zero. Right. right. I mean, the architect based his design and his building on the sense of that state mm -hmm. of needs. What yes. we did. That's what so he did. did. He did the job that he was tasked with by the town, but Mark made it sound like he got out of control and just did whatever we wanted. You know, he throws out, well, he designed three pools. Well, sure he did. One's a competitive pool, one's a diving pool, and one's a heated pool. For all three different reasons, right. mm -hmm. but he didn't. He didn't say that part. No, of he did not. And I brought that up. So I don't know where three pools came from. <laughs> did not. It's on the statement of need. They're three not pools. Olympic size pools. Right. right. What, three different, different. One of them types. is very small. Yes. The therapy, the therapy, therapy pool. pool. The therapy right. pool was very small. Yeah. There's more like seniors. Yeah. High heat is one. Yeah, one. Yeah, because a competition then, pool, seniors aren't going to want to go in because the temperature has to be kept at a lower right. temperature. But that would be okay with the therapy pool. They right. have to keep a different temperature. Correct. But again, right. that's why there were three pools designed right. at the building. Right. You know, he, he threw out in a meeting, like, you know, the architect was out of control and he put in three pools and who has three pools? And everyone in a meeting mind went, three Olympic sized pools. And that's not what right. the design was. And when the commissions, the Senior Commission and the Parks and Rec Commission were tasked with coming up with a statement in need. We kind of all thought, at least the Park and Rec Commission did, well, we may as well go for the dream, go right. for what we want, and then we can always come back and visit, visit it to bring it down. But it was ne it was never brought back to the commissions to bring it down. It was never even brought back to the committee to bring it down. Yeah. There's there's ways we could make changes. We didn't need Absolutely. that big open space as far as I'm concerned. Right. You could make a solid upper floor instead of having that. Big but you're asked to design something. Why not design something that's there. the best of right. the best, right. knowing you can it's always bring nice, it down? I went to South Windsor. They have a <clears throat> community center, senior center, and they had a baby shower there. They rent out their yeah. Yeah. common area, and people brought in <laughs> uh, pizza trucks or something, and and they rent it all, and I thought that was a wonderful idea, and it's yeah. very nice, and it's all on one level, you know. Well, a lot of our buildings are already doing that. Tina does that sometimes, yeah. and the Creek library does it, does it a lot. Yeah. Pistol the Creek. library rents out a lot of their right. space. Yeah, Pistol Creek does baby people. showers, birthday yeah. parties, baby weddings. Baby. Yeah. We had a wedding at Pistol Creek last year. I've never attended anything at the library that was funded by- well, They have a lot. I rent out to condo associations stuff. for their meetings. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm also renting out now to the New Grand High School class of 1972. You rent here? Yep. And they come in and yep. they, they bring food and stuff? Well, that, that one is. They're bringing pizza. Uh-huh. They're having like a sing-along or something. Christmas sing-along. <laughs> in honor of If you start thing. looking around for a place to rent, if you look at your public buildings, a lot of them do. Yeah. yeah. Crystal, Creek gets, renting a home. Crystal Creek gets rented out. Yep. For shower, birthday parties. Yeah, the community this, center too. this would be a central location. And I, I just thought the plan was good with the, the right. open plan with the kitchen right, right but there. But the mayor is not going to say that the ones we visited, because I was on all those visits, mm -hmm. they all rent out their buildings. Yep. And that's where they make their money. You well, told that at the parish hall over and look, we're never going to make enough revenue to cover the operational costs. We know that. But, but you have opportunity to make revenue. Right. The, the other thing, yeah. the, there was a point that I couldn't remember when I got up and spoke. And the last point I was going to ask you was, does the police department cover their expenses? No. Does the public works department cover their expenses? No. Does the board of ed cover all their expenses? No. So why are we saying the senior community center should cover all their expenses? It should it's an asset to the community. Right. It's, it's a service. facility that brings people service. to the community or live here because of the facility. And, you know, you, you can't say, hey, all these other places aren't making money. Well, yeah, it's a wrong model for the community. And I mean, our seniors, that's not the purpose of it. Our seniors are getting bigger, the community is getting bigger and bigger, and they're going to continue for another eight or nine years. You're going right. to have all those people retiring that are to come. And we don't have enough. <laughs> we really don't. It would be, and then uh, every time I go to a board of uh, uh, council meeting, I tell them the same thing that it would enhance the town. Not, it's not just, and I told him that here, it's not just for seniors. 
it's well, now we got to right. But now we got to say to the mayor, okay, you said in that meeting, January twenty twenty four, we got to get going. So maybe who's doing it though? He tells me that everybody wants the why. I know that. Everybody and I, that day here, nobody wants I know, but why. he's not going to say it any different, Barb. I know that. But he is set on the why. I know that, but There's he said. Nothing to change his mind. He said the people don't want the why, and that the, they want the why. And that was not true that <clears throat> day that we were here. No, they don't want the why. Of course not. Those are the people I don't. I, now, now, when they're finally beginning to realize that that's what he's pushing, a lot of people are saying, I don't want to why. <laughs> Well, I think I think what we need to try and secure is a copy of the the Britain and the Meriden Wise budgets, which should be under public. That should be public, yeah. Because they're a nonprofit. <laughs> um, to take a look and see exactly if they're how much they're making, breaking even on whatever. I mean Well, New Britain was in trouble. They had to get money. They got the grants. I read that article, but part of the art I had the article. That meeting. Where so, would you get those budgets? Where you would find I think, us? I think, I think you gotta, I don't know. Would they can't get their taxes? Because I did ask. One of the I asked a friend of mine. Like the new Britain? No. Meriden's packed every time you go. I asked a friend of mine who lives in a town. But I don't know what they make. Like, you know they're not in the town. Yeah. Town. I asked a friend of mine. Yeah. I asked him. Um, he works for the Department of Revenue Services so, for the state. So I asked him, <laughs> is there any way that you could get copy of a uh, tax return for a nonprofit. It's public, isn't it? He said no. He said something about federal. Well, there had to be some problem for them to get a million dollar grant. The yeah, building's falling apart. It's a 150 year old building that they haven't put any money. In. That's right. I but mean, they got a grant from the state to yeah, do that. But, but uh, the bigger issue is you got one person running you have one executive director when you used to have two full time, and at some point I'm sure you had two and a half. Somebody running Brooklyn, separate from New Britain, but uh, the Navy runs both New Britain and Burl and Meriden now. And he came right out and said they do nothing for the seniors. Well, yeah, right. uh, again. So but, that's what I asked him. How do we? How could we get the tax return on the Berlin, New Britain, Meriden one? Not sure what you mean. And general returns are confidential. I'm not sure if there are rules that allow people to see returns for nonprofit or not. Yeah, he wasn't sure. Yeah, he so the website sure. I just sent you has the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2122. All right. You said not really. The, the but that's federal laws, not state. That's not the Berlin. Well, I said I thought you could because of their status, because they're, uh, they're a nonprofit. Well, my fear is they're going to. The, the finance board and Tim Grady is all in favor of the why. They're going to go ahead with this, give them that property, then we're going to be stuck with right. a building that we didn't want to begin with because the why is going to oh, end right up here. Jen no, I don't think it's, I think it's just a generic because it's ymca.org. It's not. Oh, it's not our why. But if they have it for that, then they must have it for every why. Yeah. And we might run into a problem because a lot of the neighbors don't want it over in that location because they said the traffic from the high school is already horrendous. So if we have a, another building there, but they were they were putting in another another road. road. Yes, there was, was they were putting in another road on the other end. The right? neighbors on the other end. You know. Now they're doing it down. I'm also the complaining the about my new football field. Yeah. yeah, they're I'm they're not, complaining about my new football field at the whole school. Grandpa <laughs> had it in his because we want to put the senior housing over next to her. Who? Grandpa, he lives right on oh. the corner. That that's true of any community. You know, it's just right. right. Yeah. yeah. I still get complaints on Friday night football games being too loud and too bright from surrounding neighbors. So they're they're oh, always right. there's always so going to be complaints. It's what two hours? They must yeah. go to bed done. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Rogers got the basketball lights and. the Music from the high school. We get, yeah, I get a lot of calls about that too. Yeah. I just spoke. My son just brought a, bought a house in Rocky Hill right yeah. on the his property borders the football field for Rocky Hill. High. Yeah. 
He's delighted. Yeah. He says he can sit there and watch the football game. But he's young, you know? So it goes to show you the attitude of the people. So can we get a letter written to the mayor asking for a timeline for January to have a revised plan for the community senior center? Yeah, I think a letter from the commission. So I don't right. know who yeah. wants to write that. <clears throat> but it shouldn't be TNRI as staff. Correct. Well, we already know we've lost our food bank. We haven't it's lost fine. it. It's just being relocated. All right, do you want to do the... Do you they, want they, to they, they the water water on the police department, 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 department letter? You what? To the, the mayor? Police department, department letter on behalf of the commission? <laughs> yeah, the police yeah. Bank sure. anyway. I mean, you agree it shouldn't come from me and Gina? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, it should not come from you. Right. All yeah. right. Roger, we'll do it. Okay. Thanks, Raj. That's what you get for He knew it as soon as he said it. So we have a meeting on January 22nd. Yeah, that's the snowstorm meeting, right? <laughs> so you you got to get this to the mayor by December. Right? I mean, or you, or you. No, that was it January. Could be simple. Right. So. Or you go to the first meeting in January, January and say, yeah, "Hey, Roger. we're here. What's the update?" January. What day did he draw up in January? He, just, he January, just said January 2024. He didn't give a specific date. Month of January to have something done by. Right. Which is, you know, a month and two months. So you could write the letter, A, we're asking for an update, right. and go to a January council meeting. Yeah. Which I'm going to tell you right now when they are. Maybe. If they're posted. I mean, I guess... We, we want to make sure that we have input on any redesign. I think yeah. they would have to go back to the committee before the they went back committee. to the commissions. And right now there's two miss the committee's not even full. Which committee? The community senior center committee, the subcommittee of the town council. When did he handpick? Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. He that did. one is the one you're talking about. I mean, we nominated yeah. Donna to be on it from our commission. So. And on top of it all, we were under a gag order. We couldn't even talk about it. So that was another. But they did issue. just huh? let's see. Why are there two openings? Because Mike Yaranaga was one. Yeah. And Brendan Luddy was one. And they're no longer on the council. Yeah, Brendan. So I'm gonna try and find so it has to be council? I mean it works. No. He, he chose one council member from each side. Yep. He chose Board of Finance member. Board of Finance. Dave Sear from Economic Development Commission. Barbara from this commission. commission and Donna Bove Donna from Parks and Recreation. And I was the liaison. <laughs> and she was liaison. And Debbie and I were. Well, I guess just if I can get some thoughts on what the letter should entail. Well, I think. And where does that go to the town council? Or? Close to the mayor. The mayor? Dear mayor. Dear mayor. Dear mayor. On November 1st, at our senior center community center meeting, meeting you stated <coughs> that. You had a revised plan by January. January right. Because we, the commission for the aging members, would like to know the schedule of, or you kind of want to know how's it gonna, how's it gonna happen? Who's gonna, who's gonna be on the committee? Should be presented to us. And when is it gonna be presented to the community? It needs to be presented to the commission. Well, the commission or the community. And shouldn't we have some input? When would we find out what they think is too big? What we would have to eliminate? I would pose that to him first, see what he comes back with, then ask further questions. You don't want to dump it all on him at once, right? The important thing now is to determine, like, what's his plan of execution? Mm -hmm. Who's going to determine the size? Yeah. And what kind of input would we have? Well, what kind of input the community would have? 
Well, we would and have then to... you could then once he says, okay, well, I have in place that we're going to meet on this day with these people and we're going to look at the plans or whatever. Then you could pose more questions. Yeah, because Park and Rec and, and we have submitted our statement right. of need. If we have to revise that, right. yeah. then they have to let us know that. Right. And at the council meeting tomorrow, they are placing council members on committees, and that committee is not listed. So, so yeah, the spirit they probably, at that committee, I would say, is unofficially disbanded until put back together. Would be, oh, yeah. I think I mean, they let us know that was finished. They would have to yeah, start all over. Yeah. Better less to, to start yeah. with less sure. than to bombard him because then he's going to get like all. Oh, was there, any, there wasn't anything officially that it was disbanded. No, I mean, we finished the report. Um, Brendan pre uh, presented it to town council and then town council took it and went to the board of finance. And I, d I mean, there's something in the minutes, maybe thank you for being a part of the committee or something, but. I mean, he had Tim Grayley he was speaking as, as a steering committee right. member. Yeah. So it's not like it's gone. <laughs> right. Spot. But on the town council agenda tomorrow, they're filling all the, it lists the committees that have spots open and it's not listed. They're going to fill all those vacancies tomorrow? Yeah, because they just assign town council members. Or maybe ask. Yeah. It's well, all town, it's the town well, council well, subcommittees. Well, the two empty spots on the <clears throat> steering committee was. You haven't because it's yes. disbanded it. Yeah, I'll have to look yeah. at the old minutes from when Brendan met it. But you're right, it's not like, it's and not he like made it clear that Tim Grady was still on it when he presented, yeah. He introduced him as a member of the steering committee. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. But once we presented yeah. town council, there was never any meetings, any follow-up, nothing. We were done. I'll draft something, and then I'll try and get it out to people. To make it yeah. And Tim Grady is the one that, when we were here, not this past meeting, the one before. Right. He said he doesn't know why the seniors can't stay here because he likes it here. He comes here once a year. He doesn't deal with the parking on a day. He doesn't basis. come once a year. For the meeting. That's it, yeah. yeah. That's it, once a year. He doesn't come for anything. No, he does not. So he doesn't deal with the parking no. and, and the and what people put up with that they have to go drive through and go home. They don't care. No, they don't. He needs to say it. And what about the fact that the swim team, I mean, they're traveling all over. You would think the townspeople, the high school kids would want that, you know? They would, that would be the benefit, a benefit for them right across the street. Uh, the swim, team, the swim team is a small portion of that right. equation. And with the Y, they could swim at the Y. Yeah. They already do, but they, yeah. they travel to. Yeah, but I'm saying across the street don't, would though. be this major facility right. that they could use. I know. The track and everything else. We all know, Barb. Yeah. We yeah. know it makes sense. We heard from the swim coaches. We know they're in support. We've heard it from people. And I was very excited to hear uh, Ms. Stetson say that she was also in support of that. You know? Okay. All right, so, so I think we beat Roger's going to draft a letter. You're going to bring that up at our next meeting, Roger? No, he's going to no. send it out before that. Oh, okay. Because we're going to need to get it to the middle of December, not sooner. Okay. Let me know if I can. You know, this it. commission doesn't really do email, though. Have you got extra space in your it's place? Yeah. We may have to come down. We also way. can't talk bring our food within the emails <laughs> about things because then it becomes a public meeting. So. We'll have to, everyone will have to go back to Roger, Tina directly with their thoughts on Roger's letter. We can't have an email chain discussing that because then it becomes a public meeting and it's FOIable. I mean, it's all FOIable anyway. And we can't have a, a meeting right. because then it has to be public. Right? Then it has to go before yeah. the meeting. Okay, so, so how, Roger Roger can get the letter to everyone and then you can provide your you feedback to, Roger, to Tina or, or Roger. Right, individually okay. individual just don't hit reply all okay. yeah don't reply all well, i had that issue with parks and rec commission there would be I send out full length conversation yes yeah that's fine then too. they can't respond right. all and right mess that up once you have everyone on one email it essentially becomes a meeting yeah and my email doesn't always work so I'm, i learned that through park and rec commission that's good to we had lots of conversations via email okay
Okay. <laughs> All right, Roger, thank you for doing that. I would love to see this project get underway before before I'm going. Um, is there any old business? Before yeah, we're going to do the non-resident. Yes. Okay, so the non-resident fee was, was, in, was originally adopted in February of 2005. <clears throat> I believe it was in 2016 that it went from $2 a month to $3. It has been $3 a month since 2016. So that's $36 a year. So if somebody renews their non-resident membership for the whole fiscal year, it's $36. If they join midstream, say, I don't charge them the full $36. I charge them for the month they join till June, end of the fiscal year. So I have not heard anything from anybody, but I guess you have, about the cost that we charge. Now, I have looked at other senior centers and we are in the range. We are not the highest. It's usually a range of like $25 to over $40 for non-residents to join a, uh, a non-resident center. So I've also looked at other town departments for all the fees they charge for different things. And most of them raise them a little bit each year. We have not raised it since 2016. Well, I call some places too. <laughs> and the um, New Britain seniors is $20. For the year? For the year. Rocky Hill and Newington subsidize their senior from out of town. That's what do you mean they subsidize? If you have an out of town person, they don't pay. Well, the town doesn't charge an out a non resident. Doesn't charge a non yeah a non resident. Rocky Hill and Newington, and then uh, and that's what the the person that I talked to, uh, she said that's what she thought, and then um, I was going to call. So you didn't speak to the director? No, because she wasn't available. I gotta look that up because I think Newington charges. I think Rocky Hill does too. Right. There are very few centers that do not charge for non-residents. Well, they said they charge. They subsidize the people that come from out of town. They they don't charge them. Right, but I'm saying so there are very few centers that do not charge their non-residents. Right. Most senior centers attach some type of fee to non-residents. So let's let's just, before we spend 14 okay. hours on yeah. whether we should or shouldn't, it goes back to a kind of a philosophical, right? Why are we giving non-residents the same benefit to use this facility and these programs as a resident? All right. Well, my thought was, <laughs> if you're a senior, and you're coming in like in New Britain for twenty dollars a year. No, nope, that's not my question. Let's stick to my question. I, not to cut you off, but why are we going to give non-residents the same benefit as the residents of Berlin to use this facility? Well, you could give them. You could charge them. I'm just saying, not thirty-six dollars. Three dollars a month is only three dollars a month. That's less than a dollar a week. Yeah, that's less than a cup of coffee at McDonald's for, for, for an amazing I mean, senior center where you're getting so many serve. I mean, they're coming here for a reason. Here? Because the programs are good, the place is clean, it's yeah. fresh, it's friendly. Friendly and coffee's, a and coffee's a quarter. I'll be honest, I was gonna reach out to Tina and say, Hey, you haven't raised this in a while. We should raise this number. I mean, it's I, I think I think the problem people tend to think is oh. Seniors can't afford to pay money for this, but it's a privilege to come as a non-resident to this facility. It's not, it, we're not saying residents are gonna have to now pay. No, right. Because we already pay taxes. Right. And we know we pay a lot of taxes yep. for this facility. Because we don't have any money in the school systems anymore. So this is what we can think of all that money that we pay goes to the health <laughs> fund here, right? Not to the Board of Ed. Right. Well, that's not how it works, but whatever. So I think I think that I think that a dollar a week 
is a reasonable amount to tell a, a non-resident, if you want to become a member of Berlin Senior Center and use our facility and take advantage of it, a dollar a week is not an unreasonable amount. And it's not even a dollar. It's not a dollar a week. Great. That would be 52. You want to raise it. <laughs> I, I don't disagree with you. No. You think it should be raised? Yes. It's been eight How years and it hasn't been raised. Talking about here, that comes <clears throat> here. I would say maybe approximately 30. To come here and take uh, advantage of all the programs. Mm -hmm. And some of them are here multiple. Right. It's not just one time. Yeah. They're not just coming to bingo. Right. They're involved in other activities. Right. Are those people allowed to get they can, transportation? No. They can go on our trips, which they have to pay for. At the same time. Oh, yeah. Not an additional no, rate. it's not at an additional rate. They so, go, the only thing they can't do is use our transportation. Like, we're not going to go to New Britain and pick them up and bring them. Oh, here. right, right. But if they want to go on lunch bunch trip, they could go. They want to go on specialty shopping, they can go. And they pay the fee for this. No, specialty shopping is free. Lunch bunch is everybody pays a dollar. And that dollar goes to the driver for his lunch. But we're not going to go to New Britain, pick someone up, and take them to right. a doctor's appointment. No. And no. bring them back. And the only other thing <laughs> is if sometimes there are grants that we have that are specifically for Berlin residents. Mm -hmm. So they then cannot participate in that grant program. Remember, we had dental cleanings? Yes. They could not do dental cleanings. Okay. Unless they lived in one of the three other communities that was part of our health district. Mm -hmm. But if they lived in New Britain, they could not participate in the dental. And then even when we had, I think it was the Marjorie Moore grant, it was, and we had money for subsidized trips, they could not benefit from it because it was, spe it was specified Berlin residents only. Have you had anyone say anything to you about the costs? No. Nope. So they only say it's free. Nope. And, and what are they saying exactly? They're just saying that the other towns are cheaper. They, they go to the other towns. Yeah. yeah. Is that your response to them? They yeah. go to the other towns. Because what would they say back? I don't want to. No. Because they, they like coming here See, because of the services offered. Think, you have, we have to put a value <laughs> on what we do here. Mm-hmm. Tina has to provide revenue numbers each year. Right. But we also have to put a value to say, like, these are our programs. They're good programs. They're worth something. And it's not a lot of money. You know, so they could come for so they could come for three dollars a month. They could get coffee for a quarter with pastry. And they could get free goodie. what? And a goodie. goodie. With a pastry. Yeah. That's what I said. For a quarter. They could get free Panera <laughs> bread. They can get free produce when we have it. Free they, table. What? A free table, all the stuff. Oh, the free table we have. They can then participate if we have entertainment. Like that entertainment, and, and if we have like lunch or we have dessert, that's way over $3 per person. They've made their money back. They just be really cheap. You know? You know, the, and for me, I don't care. You know, I would come in anyway. It wouldn't matter to me, but. I just had a couple of people say it. And I then you need to direct them to me, and that's exactly what I did. But they I didn't said, come, yeah, because some people are embarrassed. But I, I think Barbara, right? But I have said, Barbara, if on numerous occasions, yeah. if people can't afford things or they need things, they can come to me, and I will find a way to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Like we charge a quarter for a cup of coffee that has not gone up in. For years. years. Now you get an eight ounce cup of coffee with a pastry. <clears throat> everything is going up. Cups, coffee, creamers, everything. Right. And when I have tried to, like when we used to have the um, holiday boutique, and I would charge them a dollar fifty for their cup of coffee and their donut. That was once a year. They balked at them. So I kept it a quarter. So I didn't want to hear it. Yeah. They don't want to give a dollar fifty or whatever. You know. But we <laughs> put some value on what we're doing here. 
Well, I'm just bringing this up because a couple of people mentioned that to me, but I'm just going to say But is that, that they I'm... can't afford it or they don't want to spend it? Oh, that I don't know. I don't go into their finances. You know? and no, but I'm saying if there's that. a difference if they can't afford it. If there's just... a regular out-of-town resident that has come here every week that Tina knows who they are and they go in their off, Tina's office and say, I can't afford the $36. I would, I would find, Tina's going to work the with them. You know she yeah. is. So if they don't go to her, I mean, how do we? Well, we there can't. was one lady that came from doing this and she said she just couldn't afford it. Barbara. Yeah. But it wasn't, I don't think that she couldn't afford it. She didn't want to pay it. Because again, so there's they're, a they're, compa they're comparing it to what they can, if, if they went to the Newington Senior Center, they wouldn't have to pay that. So why do I have to pay it when I go to the Burlington Senior Center? Because you're not a resident of Burlington. Right. And why aren't Burlington you going Newington. to the Newington? Why are you choosing hours over Newington? Why, There's why a reason. To come to here instead of, well, because my friends are here, because whatever, whatever the reason is. But she didn't have friends. Well, I know, but I'm just so That's I mean, what I mean. She didn't have friends. She was coming here. So she liked the center. Right. She liked the atmosphere. We were doing the weeding right. or whatever. Right. So, so there's a, a value. Right. So it's worth it for yeah. her. Whether it's a dollar or fifty dollars. Right. Even though she doesn't like it. Right. I bet you if you were <laughs> increased the fee to a hundred dollars, she would pay it. She would block the whole time, but she would pay it. Well, she doesn't even come anymore. No, because so. she's sick. Well, is that why she doesn't come? Yeah. Because she's sick. Right, but we have other members that come from all over that pay it and have no problem, and they come multiple times a week. They're getting their money to well, And if you raised they, it, they'd they probably should, still pay it in kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah, because it's a good atmosphere. Right, exactly. Is it our job to set that fee? It's your job as a commission to make a recommendation to Tina what the fee should be. Ideally, you vote and you're you're together in that vote. Um, and then Tina submits it to finance. You go to the fee. Okay, so we need a motion so we can actually discuss. Now ours is $30 still, right? $36. $36. Oh, it's 30. I don't know why I wrote down 30. So 30 before, we, cents. before we talk anymore, we need to put a motion on the floor so we can discuss. I mean, actually, to be honest, my parking and our commission does not vote on them. They have a discussion and say, hey, you have our support oh, to, to uh, do it or not. We, I, pr I propose a spreadsheet of what the raised fees are through Parks and Rec. They talk about it. We explain why we're raising certain fees. And they basically say, okay, we all support it. Is, do we have that? Uh, you have to ask everyone at the table to it's see if they support. It. For the year. But I don't think you technically need to vote on it. And then if somebody were to join, say, in December, it would only be three dollars a month from December to June. Yeah, my sister-in-law joined. And then we paid, send a renewal. She paid twenty-seven. In June, Tina prorated it. Right. <laughs> then it, in June, the renewal letters go out, and they can decide if they want to rejoin. It. Some do, most do, some don't. Not to not to add a headache to you. Yes. Is it, is it hard for you to track when people have joined or when they were when they joined? Is that part of your software system? Yeah. Well, I put I had to keep a spreadsheet. Right. So and when they so like it. the people that are currently non-residents that have joined, you can easily know who those people are. Yeah. Versus up. somebody that you put in tomorrow. You want to know. What are you looking for? So if you added if you added somebody as a non-resident next Monday, yeah, would you be able to distinguish them from the thirty people or so that have already been? Yeah, because your report has a join date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So so I that keep a spreadsheet of when they joined. Yeah. So then so then the and then I add to it as I get people. Yeah. So then to appease the ones, but it's also in my 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 senior time. Okay. So yeah. then so my my thought would be since we're not doing a motion. Um, it, to, if we can keep the $36 fee for those that are currently in the system and are members and look to raise the rate for these new people to, gee, $4 a month, that's $48, $48 a year. Which hasn't been raised since 2016. So it would be $40 a year? 48, 48. Four dollars a month. And that wouldn't go into effect till new fiscal year. That would go into effect July 1, 2024, and it would only be for new oh, new new current, current new membership. Membership. 
All right, 36. Yeah. So it doesn't impact anybody who's currently paying it. And anybody new coming in would be $48 a year. See, I I don't know. I just think $48 a year is a lot of money. But I'm curious, Ann and Kay, what are your thoughts on this? Because you guys have been kind of quiet. I live a block from here. But but as a commission member, you have to have a view of which you if you if we were to vote, which way you would vote. Well, let me throw something out, out on the table. Um, we have a lady who comes here who is residing in the town of Portland, but who lives in Canada. What do you do with her? She's a very good member. She contributes. Is she a Berlin resident member? Do you know? Yeah, but she doesn't come all the time. She just visits, right? Well, I think she stays here. So she doesn't live in oh, Canada anymore. Right. She lives in Berlin now. She well, she's she's trying to say she, she's a she's a resident of Canada, not an illegal alien. She's uh oh. not an American citizen. She's cool. not an American citizen. She's a Canadian citizen, but she lives in Berlin. <clears throat> she's on a visa or something. So she's living does, in Berlin. Does she have an address in Berlin? Then yes. she's a Berlin resident. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then she's a Berlin yeah. resident. Yeah. yeah. So she's a Berlin resident. Yeah, that's she's easy. Berlin doctors. Yeah, yeah. she's a Berlin she's resident. Berlin then. resident. So, so I'm curious, have... what are your guys' thoughts on the 36 versus the 48? What about you, Ann? I say, you know, I say we could go for it. Yeah. Well, well, Everything I mean, else is you cool. know, my sister in law squats, but if she squats too much, I'll throw in the extra. <laughs> she won't. Well, you, you, she won't. She's only going to be 36. It's only new members from July 1, 2024. Uh, 36. You know, because she didn't want to go. She could go to Newport for free, but she doesn't want to go by herself. Right. I mean, I may not even ever get her in here. <laughs> You're not her in here. Yeah, I know. I'm hoping she'll start coming. Right now, because she had the COVID, she's all weirded out. <laughs> I don't know. In my opinion, I I felt $36. I thought it was $30. $36. I would be opposed to going to 48 That's my opinion. Or other I mean, you guys can take a vote. No one's telling you you can't if you want to make mean, it if official. If you look at it monthly, it makes it more, much more palatable, <laughs> really. I mean, you know, three dollars a month is not that much money. It's just looking at the whole thirty. But they're not paying three dollars a month. They're probably paying the whole forty dollars. Right, but she's saying there's fifty-two weeks. If you break in it a down. year, if you break it down, they're paying less, less than a dollar a month. And once again, it's I'm sure if someone can't pay the forty-eight all at once and went to Tina and said, "Can I do four dollars every month?" I'm sure Tina would yep. be happy to do that. Yep. And if they didn't have the money and wanted to join. I would take it out of my kindness and I would pay their money. Okay. okay, so should we vote? Kindness. Roger, you want you Roger, you want to make a motion? You guys we may as well. We've made a motion if we're gonna vote. We, may, uh, we may as well make it official. Get ready, Julia. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that current members that are non-residents will continue to have a thirty-six dollar annual non-resident fee. And anyone as of July first, twenty twenty four, would have a forty eight dollar annual non resident fee. Any more? Dis oh, we need a second. Second. All right. Any more discussion? Again, we're not talking about a majority of the people that use this. We're not impacting the Berlin seniors that live in our town and pay taxes. It's the non residents who want to have the luxury to come here. Just think what the non resident rate will be when we get a new. Community center. Oh, a lot more than 48 48 dollars a year. And at that point, I'd be happy to raise it. I, I understand that, but we need to be happy with the facility we right. have and be able to maintain the quality of programs that we're able to offer with the staff and facility that we have. And everything, I mean, everything's gone up. There's not one thing on the face of the earth that is less now than it was two years ago. That's for sure. Yeah, my, that's that's my security. Security. yeah. 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 that money is for Yeah, that went up. I mean, that's the went. No, they went up. Concerned. They went up, but but not as much as you would like, right? So so I mean, I I, I think it's at a reasonable amount that you're looking at in this day. And the other thing to keep in mind, 
is that the seniors that are becoming people that are becoming seniors have more money than the seniors that have been seniors. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> so you can't just base it on people that have been seniors for 10, 20, 30 years because their income level is much different than those that are becoming turning 65. And I see that all the time. And believe me, I'm in houses that people are on gray cards. I was in a house today in Cheshire. The, the couple's on a gray card, meaning they get state assistance, and I'm still not quite sure why or how. Yeah. But it's the system. So they can cry poverty just as easily as somebody else. Yeah. Again, I think the people that are coming here that are non-residents aren't coming because it's $36 versus free. It's because of what we have to offer and the product that we have here is that much better than any place else. Okay, so should we take a vote? Okay. Yeah. No further discussion? discussion. All, All in favor? Aye. Does, does that make, yeah, there is discussion. Okay. Okay, because that's what we were just doing. Yeah, I mean, to do an awful lot of extra work. No. Keeping them separate. No. That's why I asked that question before. No. So I already have an established list. <laughs> All right, so the motion is. Any existing non-resident continues to pay 36. Any new non-resident starting July 1, 2024 will pay 48 moving forward. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries, three to one. Okay. <clears throat> Got so that, I Julia? recommend that. Is that the wording? Mm -hmm. um, you'll need to write in in the email to Kevin that you you're adding basically yeah because it'll be another line in the fee right. schedule yeah, we had to do that for Parks and Rec this year too yeah you raised the fees for Parks and Rec we raised it for basketball summer fun field rentals pavilion rentals lights for fields I think that's it Debbie didn't change we didn't change the community center rentals yeah I didn't change mine It'll be double the non-residents next didn't year. Class fees either. How much more money? Yeah, will I Debbie didn't touch any of those. Yeah. I don't know. Three hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> double the non-residents. Double the non-residents from thirty to sixty <clears throat> in a year. We will increase the revenue by three hundred. Well, look for that non-residents, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's okay. do the calendar and get right. out of here. Yeah. Are you happy? Calendar. You have to vote on that. Oh, that's another thing. Yes. Yeah, calendar. but you got to submit it by January. You, you by December, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier right? to go back and change it if there's no. Yeah. Don't we yeah. have to take a yeah. vote on that? Yeah, you should just for the record. Yeah. So we all received a copy of the calendar that uh, Juliet sent us. Is there any changes or discussion? No. Motion to approve the calendar. The calendar. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded? Aye. Barbara did. Aye. Aye. Oh, okay. He made first. He made it. Okay. Very good. Well, I think we're I think we're all set. Yeah. Is there any other new visits or anything else? Yeah. No? no. Okay. Motion to adjourn. It's so nice. Thank you. Thank you all for good meeting. Oh.